Hello and welcome to Buried Treasure, wherein I show off a few games that may have flown under your radar. You've probably heard of Limbo or Super Meat Boy, but you might have missed these. Here's 10 platformers that did not get enough love, in no particular order. Avalanche 2, Super Avalanche. This is an arcadey platformer with a little bit of randomness. You could fly this under the roguelike banner if you really want. It makes use of mainstay mechanics like power-ups, Goomba stomping enemies, and collecting coins, but it has a very addictive nature. It rewards you for comboing kills as well as touching as many platform sides as you can without landing. The power-ups are pretty game-changing, offering things like a second jump, a dash, or better wall clinging. This game can get pretty frustrating, but you'll still find yourself trying for a better run because of its addictive nature. Gateways. This game is totally bonkers. Gateways offers a non-linear level structure with portal puzzle solving. This game very quickly breaks off from being just a 2D portal metroidvania, as it includes a myriad of different brain-busting mechanics. Not only does the game have you thinking with portals, it has you rotating gravity, shrinking and growing yourself as well as folding yourself in time. Just don't touch yourself in the past, you'll paradox yourself into a universe where it rains donuts. Fly Wrench. This game belongs right next to Super Meat Boy for games that challenge you but never punish you. Flywrench is difficult to describe and debatably not a platformer, but where else would it go? It has you tapping the flap as well as changing your color. You need to change color to pass through certain gates. Sounds easy? Well, this game will constantly have you saying, you're expecting me to do that? Moments before you're saying, whoa, I did it. Super responsive controls, clever level design, a slow but steady ramp in mechanics and challenge, and a unique soundtrack make this game an absolute must play. A scapegoat. This game is an absolute classic. A scapegoat is not the most dexteritous platformer. Sure, you have a double jump, a dash, and you can teleport with your mousy compatriot, but still, a scapegoat isn't so much about the jumping, but the quiet moments of thought before you jump. Indeed, Look Before You Leap is the name of this game as you pull switches, divert saw blades, swap to safety, and escape with your life and mouse friend. Even just booting it up to record some footage, I was impressed by the cleverness this game displays. This game has a sequel, which is also amazing, but it doesn't replace the simplicity that I like about the first scapegoat. Earth Knight. Earth Knight is such a weird delight. It almost feels like if Sonic the Hedgehog was a hardcore endless runner. Collect power-ups which make you more agile, eggs to make it easier to kill your current dragon, kill dragons for materials to upgrade your power-ups and buy cosmetics. I love the creativity in this game, flying towards the earth and into dragons to determine the level and materials you're collecting. And the look of some of the enemies is truly something. I love it. Environmental Station Alpha. A simple but excellent metroidvania. This game isn't particularly long, but its heart is in exactly the right place, challenging you to push yourself and rewarding you with game-changing upgrades. Extra points for this game having a swinging grappling hook, something which improves just about any game. I really appreciate the mood of this game. It manages to distill the atmosphere of a Metroid game into a very tiny box and still maintains the feeling. Lulu's Temple I need you to try Lulu's Temple. It's a game which you may pass up, but it's incredible. A little bit of puzzle solving, a little bit of gun combat, a dash of Wario Land, and a bit of horror. This game is actually pretty spooky. Not in a jump scare or body horror sense, but in a genuinely creepy way. It's dark in the crypt, and you'll need to throw your torch to get a sense of the hazards and enemies around. The trouble is, some enemies take advantage of that. And suddenly you find yourself in the pitch dark with nothing but the mummies to keep you company. And okay, there is a little bit of jump scare in there. Clever puzzles, satisfying combat, and hair-raising enemy designs make Lulu's Temple absolutely up there as a modern classic. Super Mega Zero. This is another adrenaline-fueled platformer that doesn't take your time for granted. Every world introduces a new fun mechanic and uses that mechanic well in each bite-sized level. It's wild to me how many mechanics the devs crammed into this game. Levels that limit your jumps, dashing, springboards, wall jumping, sin wave gravity, and even a shmup to break up the platforming a little bit. Fantastic bite-sized levels have you say, just one more until 4 in the morning. The Misadventures of PB Winterbottom. This is another game which will have you scratching your head and thinking fourth dimensionally. The premise is simple. PB wants pie and he doesn't care who or what gets in his way. This would happen to include the concept of a linear timeline. Record your actions as a temporal clone, use your clone to collect pies. Help your temporal clones eat temporal pies. Time is wibbly wobbly and you'll have to wibble a bit as well if you want to chase those pastry delights. I love the music and look of this one, and the little rhymes between levels are excellent. The whole thing feels like a dark Dr. Seuss book. Vessel. I can't understate this. This game is as close to perfect as one can get. Vessel is a little light on actual platforms, but what it offers in return is really fun fluid physics, very satisfying puzzles, and an actually compelling story with fantastic world building. 
you play a scientist and the inventor of the fluoro, which are basically liquid golems. Fluoros are autonomous, controlled by a mechanical brain. Brains which you have an unending supply of. Throw a brain into a puddle and command your army of golems to do your bidding. Better yet, cut out the puddle man and use your water pistol. This game is so stupidly good and never for a moment stops being good. It builds on concepts in interesting and intelligent ways, it makes you think outside the box, and it has a really cool ending. I can't recommend this one enough. Jetson's Invasion of the Planet Pirates. What? I never hear anyone talk about this game, and it's so good. It feels innovative even today. Earth is being attacked by pirates, and George needs to grab his trusty vacuum and, uh... Uh, listen, I'll be blunt, nothing about this game makes a lick of sense. It kind of feels like a studio was working on a tech demo for something involving a vacuum. It had you sucking the walls to wall jump, grabbing blocks to shoot at enemies, and running with the kind of speed that would make Sonic envious. Then the studio got their budget cut and were asked to come up with something for the hit new Hanna-Barbera show, The Jetsons. So they swapped the assets for some Jetsons themed one, and voila! Bankruptcy! Well, wait, that's exactly what went down? Minus the bankruptcy part? This company works on Dokapon Kingdom? Weird. Well, good luck getting either the original or the Jetsons. Remember, emulation is theft and Nintendo will never make either of these games available, so happy sailing! Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.